Hi, Tim Brunner with IFS Coatings with another edition of Inside the Bubble with Thermoplastic Powder Coatings. Let's come inside. So you've looked into the benefits of thermoplastic powder coatings and you've realized there's a ton of opportunity in the market. You've done your research, coated some lab panels, and you've zeroed in on the perfect thermoplastic solution for your application. You got the test results you wanted, the 4,000 hour salt spray, Xenon Arc, and now you're ready to run your first thermoplastic line trial. Anxiety about bringing thermoplastics into your plant for the first time? It can happen to the best of us. But now that you're expecting a line trial, let's talk about what to expect when you're expecting. So the two most frequent questions that we get are, can I run thermoplastics on my thermoset line and what does that look like? And what kind of contamination issues do I need to worry about? So taking these in order, running thermoplastics on your line. The good news is the answer is almost always an emphatic yes. In most cases, it's merely a matter of turning some knobs. Now, thermoplastics have a substantially larger particle size than thermosets, which drives most of these needed adjustments. Now, these larger particles sometimes need a little more energy to get going and keep them moving. And your technical service representative might want to turn up the fluidization air on your feed hopper, or if you're using a box feeder, increase the vibratory energy to, to keep the powder cascading down towards the intake, or any other host of tricks of the trade to ensure uninterrupted powder flow. Now these larger particles also accept the charge differently, so they might also want to work on your electrostatic settings. Sometimes turning down the KV uh, around 10% or even turning them up by 10% is necessary. Just keep in mind that with all the different equipment out there, manufacturer, make, model, even the age of the equipment, these are all relative numbers. Now coming back to the contamination question. This is a manageable issue, and the degree of difficulty has a lot to do with the type of thermoplastics that you're running. If you're running a typical polyethylene thermoplastic, which by far covers the highest number of applications, it should be treated like a good color change. Think of it as going from a dark to a light color. In fact, we have many customers that coat polyethylene and polyester on the same coating line every day. Now, if you're trialing a nylon, a polypropylene, or other high milk point coatings, your technical service rep is going to want to do a few extra cleaning steps before and after the trial, which includes a good thorough gun clean and a good fluid bed hopper clean. And we'll probably want to have a discussion with you about breaking out a new set of dedicated hoses. All of this is good advice. Listen to your technical service rep, and all of these contamination issues are manageable. Okay, one last big topic, oven time and temperature. Now the technical data sheet is always a good place to start. And if you're trialing an IFS Puroplast product, all Puroplast technical data sheets have recommended oven time and temperature. However, thermoplastics only need enough time and temperature to flow out to an acceptable smoothness, an orange peel. That's it. Once smooth, additional time and temperature is not needed. Now a typical cure cycle of 10 minutes at 400F will probably work just fine. But since we're not tied to that cure cycle, oven temperature can be exchanged for oven dwell time. Higher temperatures, less oven time, lower temperatures, more oven time. On the low and slow side, I've seen polyethylenes run at 280 Fahrenheit for 45 minute oven time. On the screaming hot fast side, a preheated part to 600F with a 10 second blowout time is not uncommon. And everything else in between is possible and there to be optimized for your operations. Now, you might not get this optimized on your first line trial, but your technical service rep might want or even need to take advantage of this flexibility during your line trial. So don't freak out if you're asked to raise or lower your oven temperature by 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Most everything else not mentioned here is pretty much the same as thermosets. Cleaning, pretreatment, racking density, it's all pretty much the same game. Now the IFS Puroplast troubleshooting chart is a great reference and it's free to our coders. Stick it on your wall. It's in English on one side, Spanish on the other, and you can wipe it off if it gets dirty. Hopefully we've knocked down a little of the apprehension of bringing thermoplastics into your plant for the first time. I'm sure your trial is going to be wildly successful and you'll have some nice new shiny parts to show off. Making sure it says IFS Puroplast on the box sure seems to improve the odds. And if things didn't quite go as well as hoped for the first time, well, check out some other videos and podcasts we have on thermoplastics uh, where we cover a huge range of topics including removing thermoplastics from the part and even some repair techniques. So now that you have some idea what to expect when you're expecting your first thermoplastic trial, if you have any questions on any of these thermoplastic topics, your IFS Puroplast Technical Service Team is always here to help. Just reach out. Best of luck.